Hey, Ed here from Opus Partners, and if you're watching this video, you've probably just downloaded my portfolio planning spreadsheet. Now, you might be looking at it and thinking, how do I get this to work? How do I interpret the results that I'm getting out of it? Now, that's what we're going to cover in this video today. So I'm going to share my screen now with you and just walk you through how to use it and how to interpret the results. All right, so here we are in the portfolio planner, and what I've already done is I've put in two different properties that I'm assuming this investor already owns. So I've got their owner occupier, so their own home, and also an assumed investment property. Now I've called them, one a growth property, one a yield property, got their region in there. I've set their purchase state to current, so they are already owned, got their values, their mortgages in there, and then I've also got their interest rate, mortgage term, growth rates, all of these things. Now why are we setting this up? This is all here because we are trying to figure out when can this investor purchase their next investment property. And this is calculating it from an equity perspective. So what we've got going on over in portfolio projection in the background is we've got a 15 year projection over what the property values are going to be and also what we're projecting their mortgages to be. Either if that mortgage is being paid down, if it's not, that stays the same over time. And what we've got here is the potential usable equity within each property. So that's how much you can actually borrow against each property in order to fund the deposit for the next investment property. And so that is what this whole spreadsheet is trying to calculate. When am I able to purchase the next property? And after that, when can I purchase the property after that? Now, what you're going to want to be looking out for is this graph here. You want to be making sure that this blue line is at the point where you are able to purchase the next property. And the orange and gray lines here, these are potential properties that you could purchase into the future. So as long as the blue line is above one of these two, you would be in the position to make a purchase at one of these years, at least from an equity perspective. Now you might say, well, Ed, how do I know what, you know, what is that Auckland townhouse there? What's that Christchurch townhouse? So what one of the issues is when you are building out a portfolio like this, there are two things. First of all, A, you want to put your next, your own property in here. The other issue is you've got to think about, okay, if I'm going to purchase a property in seven years time, what's the price of that property going to be? Now to set this up, come over to the potential properties tab under Excel. And this is where you can set up yourself five different properties that you might potentially purchase. Now, the first time you open this, there are going to be three by default, but you can put in, I've put in an Auckland townhouse, new build, Christchurch townhouse, new build, Wellington uh, apartment, new build. I've got today's prices, my projected growth rates for these, so 5% for a growth property, 3% for a yield property, and also today's LVR. So for a new build, it's 80%. I need a 20% deposit. I can borrow 80% of the money, put that there. But if this was, for example, something like I wanted to be a renovations focused investor, I could put Timaru renovation, you might say, I expect those prices in Timaru for this specific one to be growing at 5%. I think that the current price of that property is going to be $500,000 and the LVR of course is 60%. So what this tells you is that today you would need $200,000 worth of deposit to purchase that property. But of course that is increasing over time as that Timaru property is increasing in value. Now the whole reason for setting up your properties like this allows you to come over to the setup tab and first of all the first two the first two properties within this table will be reflected here. So for instance if I come over here and I'll give you an example of this and I put my Timaru renovation property over here sixty percent LVR then I am now going to see under the setup, I've got my Timaru renovation. So I probably couldn't do it in the first year, but I could potentially do it in the second year. Maybe I can definitely do it in the in year three based on these projections. And the great thing about this is you can then select it here. So let's look at that Timaru renovation and say, well, what is the price of that going to be in two years time? What's the price going to be in one year's time? Now, the reason you want to know that is that we can then start mapping out these properties. Now, just for an example, I'm going to put this back to Auckland Townhouse New Build. 
and we said that was an $850,000 property with a 80% LVR on that. So let's take a little look see at this. We can see, okay, right now, the amount of usable equity I'm going to need for this Auckland townhouse is 170k. What have I got there? Usable equity, point now, that's this year, 184k. So actually, yeah, I will be able to, potentially, if I put an Auckland townhouse, I want to do it right now. Whoops, clear my comment. We said that we want to do that today, 850, let's put that in. So I'm going to say Auckland townhouse example. And we can start building this property investment portfolio out. Bang that in there. I'm going to call this a growth property. It is, of course, based in Auckland. And then we are going to make it current. So we're going to do it today. $850,000 mortgage. And I'm going to say that I'm going to borrow all of the money against my properties. Now, because I've got my principal and interest mortgage there, I am going to put my investment property on interest only. 2.6% is probably the interest rate you'll pay today. Don't need to put in a mortgage term because it's interest only. And I'm going to say it's going to be a 6% growth rate. Cash flow per week, negative 75. Now, let's take a look at these graphs. You can see now we don't have as much usable equity straight away because we've just spent that on a townhouse. I'm just going to show you what happens if we say, well, let's buy that in a year's time. So then we start to see that dented. So your next question is, well, when can I buy my next property? So I've just spent all of the usable equity I have in order to be able to purchase that property in Auckland. And it looks like number four. So in four years time, we expect you will need $158,000 of usable equity to purchase a Christchurch townhouse. And if you hover over it, it might be a bit hard because they're right on top of each other. But if I come over to year four, scroll down to usable equity, so total usable equity in year four, 190 odd K. So yes, you probably would be able to buy a Christchurch townhouse based on these projections. So what will that what will the price be on that Christchurch townhouse in four years' time? 790. So let's put that in there. Christchurch townhouse. Oops, townhouse. And you can put in any properties that you really want uh, in order to be able to do this. So it does work for new builds, it does work for uh, renovations as well, if you're running a birth strategy. So let me put these in, and we're going to say we're going to purchase that in four years' time, and the price of that property is going to be $790,000, 790, one, two, three. Pop that in there. At that point, I'm still going to have a mortgage because my mortgage term is 28 years, and I'm going to say the mortgage rate at that point do you know what? It's probably going up quite significantly. It might be something like 4.5% at that point. To be fair, these mortgage payments don't really matter. I'll show you where that matters in a second. But when you're putting in for the investment properties, to be honest, they don't pull through in any of the other calculations. That might be negative 50 at that point. So let's take a little look at our graph again. So we're going to spend that usable equity in year four. That's gone down a little bit. So now we can say, when are we going to buy the next one? Well, in year seven, well, you might be able to buy back in Auckland again. Da, 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 da. So this is how you would start to map this out over time in order to be able to see that. Now, what have we got here as well? You can see this is when your equity and your mortgages are growing, the size of your portfolio. So blue line is the size of your portfolio. It's kinking up or it has a step up whenever you've added an extra property in there along with your mortgages. Now you might say to me, Ed, well, how do I allow myself to borrow more quickly? How could I grow my investment portfolio more quickly? Well, let's get rid of these two properties and let's put yourself in a bit of a worse position, if I can say that. So I'm just gonna clear, whoops, all of these and just give you an example of where that mortgage payment is actually starts to become very, very useful. So what I'm going to do now is increase maybe the size of this mortgage to $600,000. Cool. And where are we? Ah, okay. This isn't very good. I don't have enough equity straight away in order to be able to make a purchase. So what can I do? And so we are over here looking at this mortgage and you can see it's relatively low. So one thing you can do is say, well, I'm currently paying this off 
on a 28-year term, my weekly repayments are $270, which is quite low. Maybe you can afford $600 per week if you wanted to pay this down really aggressively. So you can adjust that mortgage term and say, well, let's say I paid that down over 10 years instead of 28. Now, that means your mortgage is going to decrease more quickly. Now, at what point would you be able to purchase? Definitely in year three or in three years time, potentially in year two. Now, let's just put that back to 28 and see where we were at if we didn't pay that mortgage down aggressively. Well, in that case, we'd have to be looking at maybe year three, year four's looking okay, but you might be able to bring that forward by a year or two if you're paying down that mortgage much more aggressively. So this is the basics of how to use this spreadsheet. Some of these fields are used in calculations, such as you know interest rates, mortgage terms, if it's a principal and interest mortgage. Some of them are more for your information as you're planning out your portfolio. So growth and yield and the region that each property is in, those are not used in any of the calculations, but this allows you to say, hey, do you have enough growth properties? Do you have too many yield properties? Maybe you don't have enough yield properties, but let's go through and define that so at least you know as you're going through this the structure of your portfolio growth versus yield. Similarly, do you have too much exposure to one region? Do you want to diversify outside of your home region potentially? Well, you can put this here and then make that judgment call, but we wanted to put it there so you can decide on that. So now you know not just how to use the spreadsheet, but how to use it to plan out a property investment portfolio. Now, there are two things I want to mention. If you have feedback, send me an email. My email is ed at opuspartners.co.nz. Some of the best ideas we've had for our other spreadsheets have come from people like you who send an email and say, Ed, could you do this? Now, the answer may be no, but more often than not, it's, yeah, that's a great idea. We should do that. So flick me an email. I'm useless at replying, but I read everything and I actually do implement that feedback. So would really value that. Second thing, if you're thinking, okay, I've mapped out my portfolio, or I'm a bit unsure about how to still do this, then you might like to come in for a portfolio planning session. These are free meetings. We get to come in, sit down with a property partner from OPAs, and they work with investors every day to map out property portfolios. So if you'd like to come in, sit down with an expert and get it sorted, see how property can be used to meet your long-term goals, then click one of the images in the spreadsheet, pop your details in a form on the OPAs website, and we'll be in touch.